the message that you nice. can uh, easily just share with your friends and families and your neighbors. Um, so that app is League in Action. And so always a pleasure, Barbara and Daryl, um, to share space with you, to join you in conversations with other amazing speakers. Um, and the way that folks can reach out to us is by uh, email. It's organizing at lwb.org. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Eldridge. Thank you, Donald Whitehead. Thank you, Mighty Thank you. Romel Sandino. We can't wait to keep working with you. Our Rise and Vote is coming to your community. Get ready, everybody. We're so excited. Uh, thank you so much to all our guests. Fantastic, Barbara. And uh, hopefully uh, Karen McRae and Attorney Terry O'Neill have joined us. Are they Are they with us? Well, Barbara, as they're uh, preparing to, to come uh, yeah. and join us, you know, this, you know, when we're talking to uh, Ramel and we're talking to Eldrick and uh, we're, we're speaking to Donald Whitehead, you know, the, the various areas that they represent, you know, they're all distinctive, right? You know, we don't hear much when it comes to voting rights with the National Coalition for, for people dealing uh, that are homeless. So it's really great to get that perspective. You know, and interestingly, I think also it's always good to, it's good to get the perspective of the college students and those that are in universities and, and young voters that are in uh, that vein, as well as those that are working with the League of Women Voters. But interesting, uh, Barbara, I, I think that you know, this I'll Rise and Vote concert series that, that, that yes. the Transformative Justice Coalition is, pla is planning, it's really uh, designed specifically for the issues that Donald Whitehead was talking about. You know, that there are barriers that are put up to people that are unhoused or insecure housing to voting. There are barriers to the knowledge of what they can do to, to use their vote and to be able to vote. So it's great when we have this I'll Rise and Vote saying we're going to rise over these these uh, problems, these these barriers that have been put in front of us. We're going to rise over them, college students. We're going to rise over it, uh, homeless folks. We're going to rise over it, those that are impacted. We're going to rise over <laughs> all of these hurdles, and we're going to cast our ballots. So, Barbara, it's great, great, great to hear about this I'll Rise and Vote concert series and, and understanding its purpose and watching it come into fruition, Barbara. Yes, and we call it a I'll Rise and Vote, you know, voter activation in concert series because we're going to be saturating the the airwaves. We're going to be saturating social media with all kinds of messages of urging people to vote, urging people to make sure they're registered, urging people to show up and vote to have, as Daryl Jones, what do you say? Come on, Daryl, what are you talking about that plan? Oh, yeah. You got to plan your vote and vote your plan, Barbara. Say it again, Daryl. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got to plan your vote. Plan your vote and then vote your plan. Plan your vote. Are you going to vote early? Are you going to vote by absentee ballot? Are you going to vote Election Day? Are you, does your state have same-day voter registration? Plan your vote. And then after you plan the vote, do that active thing and go and vote. That's what it's about, Barbara. I mean, and people, listen, my mom, until who, you know, who lived to be almost 92, she would to her dying day, if there was an election, she would get on that phone and call people and say, are you ready to vote? And if they said, oh, I don't know how I'm going to get to the uh, polling place, she would call somebody else and say, aren't you going to vote? And they say, yes. Will you go pick up why? and take them with you. Listen, folks, Daryl's correct. You must have a plan. you got to think about how am I going to get to the polling place? What are the groups that can help me that are out there if I need a ride? Folks, let's do this because it is our time. It's our time. Uh, and Karen, uh, have you joined us yet, Dr. McCray? Yes. Yes, Hi. I'm here. How are you? Oh, wonderful. And Terry, Attorney Terry O'Neill, have you been able to join us yet? Hi, I'm in, yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. We're so <laughs> glad the two of you are here uh, because we've just been talking about National Voter Registration Day. You can tell we're fired up. We're talking about our rise and vote, our new you know, uh, voter activation and concert series planning that we're going to be executing throughout this United States. Uh, 
And what we want to talk about right now is, you know what I want to talk about, that darn media. How would you rate them? You know, you know they, they just continue to flounder. How would you rate their coverage, uh, Karen, of in the last uh, two weeks, on uh, on this uh, you know 2024 election, I, I'm 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 going with a C minus, and I and I'm really on the fence about a G plus. So I'm going with a C minus. Um, it, it's improved slightly, but not much because I don't think they're doing enough to, to combat disinformation, and I think yeah. the landscape has gotten more um, vast, and I don't think they've done enough to combat it. Wow. Um, and think, Terry, yeah. Yes. And Terry, you know, um, what's your grade and what can people do? You know, there's a lot of lying going on out there. Woo! I can't believe it. Tyree, stop. Uh, Ice Cube, come <laughs> on, y'all. Just stop this yeah. lying. That's Joe Brown. What's wrong with y'all? Up here just lying to the public. So how do people, Terry, know when they're hearing this information? How do they get real live, truthful information, factual information. All right. Well, I, there's a couple of ways. First of all, if you hear something about a woman of color who is running Woo! for office, no matter what level, there's many women of color running for office around this country. We're nonpartisan. I'm not going to name any names here. But what you want to do is call your girlfriend because there's a lot of misogynoir uh, right. lies going around. Right. It's not just yes, hey, the women, woman of color hey, who is it, right. It's a racist attack, but it's also a sexist attack. Yeah. And that's misogynoir. That's that's uh, misogyny against black women or women of color and especially yeah. against black women. There is one candidate in particular, for example, uh, who being multiracial, which many, many women of color are. <laughs> all right. Let's be clear about this country's history. Um, and so the attack on her was, well, she's not really black. She's so she, but she claims to be black. So she's she's obviously not trustworthy. Well, the, the thing about that, yes, it's a racist attack, but it's it's a specifically sexist racist attack because that is what they say about women all the time. They're not legitimate. They're imposters. They're not what they claim to be. They're just, they're just acting. They're play acting. This this happens to white women, and it happens double and triple and quadruple to women of color. So the, when you, whenever you hear a criticism of a woman of color running for office, first call, call women you know that you trust. That's number one. Number two, be very skeptical when you read headlines in the news. I get most of my news on my phone anymore, right? And I see a headline, I'm like, oh, I don't want to read that story. It's really horrible. Um, that's because the editor writes the headline, the reporter writes the story. True. And the headlines are there to sort of a little bit of clickbait there. And you can get the wrong idea from a headline. You can get the idea that a woman of color who's running for office has done something bad from a headline when if you read the story, you find, oh, no, that's not true. It's just some jerk has been accusing her falsely of doing something bad. So so be very skeptical. Finally, when you go on social media and you see something about a woman of color who's running for office, just don't believe it. I mean, seriously, <laughs> if, 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 to be fair, if it's Twitter, Twitter is now being run by an unhinged apartheid South African Nazi sympathizer. And I mean, nothing that comes out on Twitter, frankly, that's critical of of a little bit left leaning politicians, you can't trust any of it. But to be fair, Elon Musk is in control of those algorithms. He knows exactly what he's doing, and he has now become a full fledged ideologue, way extremist right wing. So do not trust what you see on Twitter in particular. And if you don't, uh, and and Daryl, uh, if people don't trust what Terry just said, look at the uh, country of Brazil has banned Twitter for disinformation and has required that they correct that. The EU, the European Union, has put out a warning to Twitter that they must correct all their disinformation and lies. Uh, this is a problem. But uh, back to you, Daryl. Well, you know, Terry, I, I just want to let you know 
that uh, I, I love the uh, the analogy that you just gave, the statement that you just gave that the reporter writes the story, but Sinclair yes. Broadcasting, the editor, writes the headline. And I, I want to let you know that you're going to hear me repeat it, and I may not give you the credit for, <laughs> for the statement. <laughs> But I really appreciate you putting that out to our, to our, to our listeners. Karen, you got a chance now to. What are you going to say, Barbara? Yeah, and I was going to say, Karen, you know, you have, uh, you know, you are the executive director for Concerned Black Men. And a lot of this sexist, evil, racist, stereotypical nonsense that's out there about black women candidates is being directed at black men. Uh, you know, what has the conversation been at, you know, CBM concerned black men about how to counter this nonsense? Yeah, one of the things, we, 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 we looked at this report that was done by Onyx Impact that specifically examined this information, how it targets black voters. Um, and one way it does is what they call the black manosphere. And how... And how they get, you know, folks with platforms to align with misogynists <laughs> to talk disrespectfully about black women, et cetera. Mm. And, and, the way, and, the way to, and the way to counter this is to go on credible sites with credible people who have facts, who can counteract this narrative when it comes across their screen. And unfortunately, there aren't enough of us who are taking the time to counteract and refute this nonsense that's coming across our screen. That's the goal. Okay, Daryl, take us home. Take us home, Daryl. Thank you, Karen. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you, Barbara. Folks, folks, you know, we are having such a such a good conversation here, and, and you know, we definitely want to, to reach out and thank uh, all of our guests that have been with us today. Barbara, my goodness, talking about uh, voting season being here, it's here, folks. It's time. It's time for you to plan your vote and vote your plan. Special thanks to Donald Whitehead, the executive director with the National Coalition for the Homeless, for all that he has done and being with us today, and to Romel Sandino, the national organizing director for the League of Women Voters of the United States, for all that he's doing. And then y'all are going to see them on the streets as we go through the Our Eyes and Vote uh, community a concert series and campaign throughout the nation. Eldrick Coleman, my goodness, 1,100 new voters coming out of Alabama State University. Special Come thanks to now. him. <laughs> Dr. Karen McCray, just turning it out, turning it out with the uh, with the black, uh, black, uh, concerned black men and, and the vote they're doing there. And our own board member, Barbara Einwine, Attorney Terry O'Neill. You know that. She's right. always president, <laughs> uh, former president of the National Organization for Women, but she's Always keeping it real. Folks, uh, get off the sidewalk, into the street. Till next Tuesday, noon Eastern Standard Time, we'll be right, right black with right black at you. Peace, everybody. Peace. The preceding program was paid for by Barbara Arnwine. Stu Stalk 1450 and 95.9 WOL with The Carl Nelson Show. Weekdays from 6 to 10 a.m. Reverend Al Sharpton keeping it real from 1 to 4 p.m. And The Tavis Smiley Show from 4 to 7 p.m. Download our mobile app and take us everywhere you are or listen live at WOLDCnews.com. The news and issues that matter to you most from Carl Nelson, Reverend Al Sharpton, and Tavis Smiley on 1450 and 95.9 WOL. Standing at the edge of a rocky shore, you breathe in the cool, salty air, watching the sun disappear on the horizon. Across the globe, someone begins their day along a sandy beach, listening to the rhythm of the crashing waves. You each envision a world beneath the water, vibrant life in every imaginable form. Now, imagine it's all gone. What was once a place of wonder and beauty is now a dull, lifeless wasteland. Food, jobs, medicine, all gifts from the ocean, all gone. Time is running out to protect our oceans. And without our love, everything the oceans provide can and will disappear. It's our choice. Love it or lose it. Help protect our oceans. Visit World Wildlife Fund at www.wf.org/love.
WOL Washington, D.C. W240DJ Washington. 95.9 WMMJ HD3 Bethesda. WKYS HD3 Washington. WPRS HD3 Waldorf and worldwide at WOLDCnews.com. The views and opinions of the following show do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of News Talk 1450 WOL.